Good day. Today is the last day of the foam armor set. This is the last piece. Uh, this is the breastplate. So this is the fourth video of four. And we're going to show you how to create this. This one's also a little tricky, the same as the helmet. It's probably about the same level of difficulty. So let's go check it out. I got some cool images with this too. All right. If you're new to this channel, please subscribe down below. Hit that bell notification so you're aware of when I post some new videos. As I said, this is the fourth and final in the foam armor set. This is the uh, the breastplate here. This was a, uh, shall we say, failed attempt one. This was my first try at it. Uh, for some reason, I got something all messed up. It's all twisted. It's out of proportion. But it'll be great for this to... Uh, show you some of those problems and uh, teach you how to build this. So with that being said, you need to gather all your supplies to determine what type of foam you're using. As you can see, this is textured one side and smooth on the other. I decided to go with the smooth. Now, we need to create a template to, to make this. The same as the helmet and the bracer. You need to create a template to make these so everything's in nice proportion. I will link the other videos down below of the other foam armor pieces so you can check them out and hopefully get some tips and trips out of that which will help you with this as well. So to make the template what we need to do is whoever's going to be wearing it you need to kind of do a cast on them. So if this is for me kind of uh, you're going to wrap that person in tinfoil. Now, if it's a female you're doing, which I obviously did for this one, uh, you've got to make sure that you get it smooth and neat around the breast area and get kind of underneath with it. Obviously, I let them do that themselves. Uh, so you picture a big band of tinfoil around me. Then what you need to do is take duct tape. As smooth as possible, get the duct tape all over this so the whole thing is covered with duct tape because the tinfoil itself is not quite st strong enough it's too flimsy so just duct tape the tinfoil up once you have all this done in duct tape and you've got the model covered you've got it as far around as you want you then need to determine on this your uh style that you're going to do. As you can see, I kind of did this little scalloping piece here. If you want it straight across, that's fine, however you want it. Because what you're going to need to do is create that shape. So you would just simply draw on the tin foil and the duct tape, that style, and then up the back piece as well. Now, to make a flat template, we need to cut this apart. So I simply found center, drew a line up, and then because the breast section on this is curved, I then separated the breast sections. Before you cut anything, make some hashtags with the marker. The same as you did for the helmet. Uh, because what we're going to do is cut this apart. And in order to put the pieces back together and to line up properly, we need to line up those hashtags. So make sure that you give yourself enough hashtags and that you've got them marked on here. So we are at the point we've got this basically made out of tinfoil duct tape. You're then going to take it off the model and then cut this in half. Then you're going to cut on, in this case, the breast piece off, which will then give you two pieces. Put the other two pieces aside. Don't worry about them for now because you're probably not going to need them. Now, with these two pieces, you need to take the bottom piece. Say this is my tinfoil duct tape piece, lay it down and just flatten it out. It's just tinfoil, tinfoil and duct tape, it'll flatten out quite easily. The breast piece, however, 
will not because it's curved. No matter what you do, unless you really mess up the top, it's not going to lay flat. So just lay it down, take your X-Acto knife and just simply find center and cut a slot. Now I cut a slot, as you can see, this way because I didn't want the seam more visible. I wanted it down more under the breast piece. As soon as you make that cut, it'll flatten right down, just like this. Now, this, you have to figure out, is a left and a right. So I've taken the right side, which is, okay? So you need to make a left and a right. You want to make one, and then simply flip it. So this is my left, and I indicated it with a left. Backside is the right. It's the same for here. So you have the symmetry in the armor. You're going to use the same piece. If I was to take from the other side, it might not be quite in proportion. So you're going to use the same pieces. So I have two flat templates made of tinfoil and duct tape. You are going to take your foam, however thickness you want, and Lay this on, I always lay right to the edge, maximize your foam, pin it, and you're then going to transfer your paper to the foam. Make sure that all your little hashtags get marked on here. As soon as you've done that, I had it this way, so this is a right. I'm now gonna flip it, put this one here, do the same thing. It's a lot. So now I've got two pieces of foam like this, one with an L, one with an R. Gonna take the next piece, lay it on, pin it, do the same. As you can see, the R is showing up. So this is a right, flip it on my next piece, there's a lot. So now I have four pieces of foam in front of me. If you want to do a metal look, then it's fine the way the foam basically is. And you can do it in paint to get more of a stealing look. This one was actually created for a Wood Elf photo shoot that I was doing. So I wanted to add some texture to this. The best way to get kind of a leather look to the foam is to take some tin foil, scrunch it all up, and the deeper the grooving in the tin foil, the deeper the grooving it'll leave in the foil, in the uh, foam, sorry. You then lay the tin foil down on top of your piece of foam, Get an iron, be careful you're not too hot or you go too long or it'll start really melting and messing up your foam. And then you just simply iron it. Once you lift it off, you will have a groove pattern in there. And I think you can see relatively well that there's some texture added into that. And you can increase that with uh, paint. So I can show you at the end how that goes. So you've got your pieces, you've got your texture added to it. Now you need to do your assembly. I take the bottom part first and join these two pieces. For glue, my trusty contact cement. It's one of those glues where you apply it, you have to leave it for a little bit to get tacky and it bonds. It either works amazing or it doesn't work at all, which happens a few times. But I now have these two pieces and you can see that they're flat. You can see that is not. I use a heat gun in order to help bend and shape foam. Now, the heat gun will close the pouring on the foam a bit, but you've already ironed this, so that's kind of already done that. And then you're going to need to heat the back to get that bending into your foam. Once you've got both sides and you can kind of heat it and push it and pull it around your body until it sits properly. Once you get that piece done, you can then take the breast sections, glue it, and then bring that seam in together. And you can see as soon as you bring it in, like with the helmet, you get that curvature back in to it. Now on here, again, simply use the heat gun and I use... I basically use my fist and I just kind of mold around it. Now you've got to be careful, as I say, this one was a failed attempt. 
you can see, especially in, in these areas here, how I was kind of burning the foam because of the heat gun. So I was messing it up. It, it was started actually curling in. Uh, yeah. Wasn't pretty, didn't go well at all. Now, once you've got this and you've got the curve into it, you then need to put it in. So when, as you've got this all glued and you're going to put in, make sure you line up and that your hashtags are lining up. If you're pushing the foam, you're going to be short on this end. If you're pulling the foam, you're going to be long on this end. And not only that, it'll take it out of proportion. And you don't want that. Or you're going to end up with this. And it, even the, the model, the woman she's putting it on, she said, this just feels weird. And it looked weird because it's out of proportion. So let me get rid of my failed attempt. But I will show you the seam lining here. I mentioned that. Uh, I used uh, silicone caulking. Before I found out only recently that Art of Wigs sells a foam clay. It comes in a tub and it's kind of like a clay, but it's foam. And it's great for filling in seams. You can pretty much make them invisible. And it just air dries, fully paintable, wonderful stuff. So let me get rid of that one and bring back this one. So then I've got it all assembled now. And if you look, you can see how I added some trim pieces to this. So I cut all that out, used the contact cement and glued all my trim on. Now, because this was for a wood elf, I wanted it all uh, leather natural looking so I didn't want any like metal pieces on it but I could have done this in a gold or silver uh, you can glue on jewels or whatever as I showed you with the helmet uh, all that stuff's available now in order to hold it on to the model because it's for photography uh, it doesn't have to be the most durable in the world I tried to make my stuff so it is fairly strong but I simply took a piece of vinyl punched three holes in put in the grommets to do kind of like a corseted back and it's just contact cemented in and I put a pretty good patch of it uh, and that's the same on both sides and then I just took a white shoelace and tea stained it so I kind of got that color and I just do like a corseting on the back what's nice with that is it makes it adjustable so other people can wear it I mean if I put it on, okay. am I a pretty girl? I think it looks pretty cool. I should put the helmet on with it. But anyways, so you can see how that works. Now for painting, because I wanted that leather look, I just painted the whole thing this color brown. Then I took some uh, black uh, acrylic paint, added some water, so it kind of whitewashed it. And it just helps give some darkening in spots and it gives it more of a worn aged look to it uh, you can spray paint it acrylic paint works well spray paint works good uh, once you've painted it all you have to be careful of shine so i use krylon matte finish it does a couple of things one it helps knock the shine down and two it helps protect the paint from getting scratched and showing color of the foam underneath now this one's black so it's not as bad but sometimes i've used yellow or green or red foam and you don't want that showing up in your photo because it just means you're gonna have to go back in and edit out all those little dings and dents and stuff that are visibly showing through so that's another good thing with your foam selection try and pick one that won't matter so much if it shows through so that's basically it for the chest piece. Again, the, the, the critical point to this is making sure that you put in all your little hashtag pieces there that you can line the parts back up because the alignment is really crucial, so especially for this. Uh, that's about all I have. That completes off the foam. I know I didn't build from scratch each piece I've had this stuff for two to three years now, and honestly, I don't need like another set. So I tried explaining how to build it this way. When I'm doing any other future projects, I will actually be building time-lapsing stuff uh, to show you the complete build of it. But I just didn't want to go through, build a whole new set of stuff, uh, wasting all the material, which I honestly don't need. One full set is more than enough. And I think you got the information you needed to be able to build it. 
Uh, I do have some really cool images. As I say, this was for a wool, wood elf uh, shoot that I did. Uh, so until the next time, let's check out these photos.